Happy Monday, everybody. Um, truly feels like a Monday. So I hope that you are ready to start our goal setting week of the Planet Forward Challenge. So this is week two. We're getting ready to go. Um, I've been trying to print my workbook for literally like 25 minutes. That's how Monday my Monday is. So instead, I'm gonna be looking at my iPad and kind of showing it off to you. But if you still need to grab your week two workbook, I emailed it out to people on my email list last night, or you can still go to the link in my profile and now it's gonna give you the week two workbook ready to go. We're gonna talk all about goal setting. I'm um, so excited you guys are all here. Um, so goals are like my thing like goal setting and planning for them and all the different tips and tricks. I mean, most New Year's resolutions only last like the first three weeks and then we give up on them. And that's not what we're about this year. So the very first thing that we're gonna tackle is getting our big goals out and onto the paper. So day one is talking about our big yearly goals. And the very first activity that you do my favorite is just a brain dump. And that's just getting any little tiny thing you can out onto the page. So whatever minuscule little goal you can possibly think of or big giant goal, go ahead and write it down. So some things that you might consider, like for me, I want to like get all the donations out of my house. And that's a goal that is not gonna happen anytime soon because we can't donate anywhere right now. But that's definitely something that's gonna make me feel better. Or maybe I wanna set another reading goal or listening to podcasts more, or maybe it's that I want to fit into those skinny jeans again. Or it could even be as small as like regularly schedule appointments to do my hair because I definitely need it. So yeah, just little baby goals or even big goals. Um, so what we're going to do is just brain dump those first. And I kind of realized like maybe five minutes ago that this whole method also sort of follows the home edit method for organizing your house and I think that's kind of hilarious. So the second page, let's see if I can, hey, hey look, it's on my iPad. <laughs> um, the second page is all about how we're going to then sort of narrow those down for the year. So we are going to first go through and edit out anything that doesn't really match what we want. So from week one, when we went through reflecting and kind of projecting what our ideal year was gonna look like, there are things that we said, yeah, that's that, that doesn't really help me out. So why are we going to go ahead and then implement those in the next year? So even though like right now I could say, oh yeah, I have this goal weight I would love to be at, at the end of next year and I should totally write down that goal. I already told myself that that was not part of my plan moving forward. So I'm gonna cross out anything that I write down like that and just see what all is left. Now, when I go into everything that's left, I'm going to start categorizing them, which is home edit step number two, um, by themes. So you'll notice that there tend to be trends in the goals that you're writing down. And you can group these together. And what's great about getting them grouped together is you can focus on things that are kind of all in one big idea. So the big idea is easier to focus on. Yeah, so SMART goals are definitely gonna be part of it. <laughs> I promise we are definitely gonna get there. Um, we are gonna go through this week as starting with our big yearly goals and then breaking them down into quarters and months. And when we get to monthly goals, then we're gonna make sure that they're smart enough that we can go through and follow along with them. So when we get all these themes figured out, you'll notice I'd say typically, People have these themes of <laughs> um, like health and wellness tends to be one or planning and organization. There usually is a financial theme. And if you take through three to five different colored highlighters and just like categorize them by what you see are prevailing themes coming out, then it's going to make you feel like you have a little bit more control over what's going on because really you're just focusing on those three to five themes. I wouldn't go any more than that because that's a lot to really think about throughout the year. But once you've gone through and categorized them, then you want to rewrite them on page three. So what if you have a goal that doesn't fit into one of those themes? What you're going to do is actually go back and evaluate, is that goal important enough that I want to have its own theme? Or is it something that really just isn't going to fit with my big plan for next year? And it's okay to dump things by the wayside. By the end of this, we'll actually have 28 different goals, not all big goals, that we can focus on and spend quality time working on throughout the year. So does that fit in that top category? Is that something that's really worth our time to think about? 
If it is, cool. But then you have to ditch another category to fit it in somewhere. And then if you have something that fits under two goals, so like for me, I meal planning has always been one of those big things that gets me back on track in so many ways. And so I need to get back into regularly meal planning, but that's financial and health and wellness for me. And so I'm going to write it under both. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to become more of a priority because it's listed under two of those different themes. So then once you rewrite them on page, I guess it's technically page four of the workbook. Oh my gosh, my iPad's going crazy. <laughs> um, then, oh, where did it go? Oh gosh, I just moved a whole bunch of stuff around on accident. Okay, <laughs> anyway. Um, then what you're going to do is you will go through and, oh gosh, sorry, this is going to drive me nuts. <clears throat> Um, when you rewrite them, you're going to want to rewrite them in a priority order. So this isn't set in stone. Nothing we write down right now is like, this has to happen, or this is going to be the exact wording that this is going to fall under, or this is the exact timing I want anything to do. This is a very fluid process. So right now we're just categorizing and theming our small goals and our big goals into things that broader ideas that we can really get our head wrapped around. And then we just want to make sure that later on, when we're going through and giving things specific dates and deadlines, we're focusing on the things that are gonna matter most to us. So kind of giving them a rough priority by putting them in order under those big themes is going to give you a lot more focus later on. So it sounds like a lot, but I promise you this is actually a super fun activity to go through. And so, Oh, I keep moving things on. I need to stop touching my iPad. <laughs> and then tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to break the goals down into quarters. So we're going to decide what our big goals are for quarters and what our little goals can be and how we're going to pick those out of everything that we've brain dumped today. So thanks for putting up with me and my technical difficulty <laughs> that you can't really see. Um... But I'm so excited. This week, I seriously could just, I wish I could do an elective class on goal setting for high school students. So while we are a little bit above the high school student level, we're going to have way more fun doing some way bigger things with our goals. So I will see you guys later. Again, thank you so much. If you need to grab the workbook, the link in my profile is updated to now give you week two.